Hi, I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com. We're here live reporting at San Francisco, California at the Moscone Center for Intel Developer Forum 2012. I'm here with John Hengeveld. Well, welcome to the Mobile Cube. Um, you are in charge of Director of Marketing for High Performance Computing for Intel, right. a big job where you guys are changing the world. So first, before we get into some of the high performance computing and all the, the great things that you guys are enabling, sure. uh, tell us about what's happening here at IDF this year with developers. What's the vibe? What's the story? What's the right. feeling? There's, there's, a, there's a, a lot of interesting things going on. We're, we're talking about uh, you know, some, some of the great tech, new technology we're coming out with. We're talking about the Ultrabooks. We're talking about my group is in the, the, the Data Center and Connected Systems group, so we're talking about uh, technology and solutions in the data center. Uh, we're talking about big data applications and where those are going. We're talking about cloud computing and how that's becoming more relevant uh, going forward. We're talking about a number of applications, technical computing, which is my area. Uh, and uh, and there's, there's some buzz around big data. There's some buzz around ultrabooks. There's buzz around uh, a lot of the new technology that we're coming out with, there, and it's been very exciting. John, one of the things I saw on the keynote today was the mission slide for Intel. And you know, first of all, Intel always has great messaging because you're inventing the future years before anyone kind of gets there with the with the with the code and the processors and now you know embedded systems now all integrated in. But it said basically creating and enabling and accelerating technology to enrich the lives of a global workforce and consumer. Yeah. So you're in that world. You're in the high performance computing, which yeah. is the servers that use the cutting edge stuff to do stuff that you know people want more horsepower. Right. You know, more stuff under the covers, under the hood, whatever you want to call it. People want more power. You're the guy. More performance and more performance per watt. So, I mean, we're in a green world today. Uh, one of the big signs around here is in order to be blue, that's Intel, you have to be green. Uh, and so what, one of the things we're trying to do is to lower the power required to, to come to these amazing solutions uh, in computation. So uh, my job is great because uh, it's easy for me to find ways to enrich the world because our customers are taking my technology and the technology of our partners and turning them into uh, better predictions of the weather, better you know, where's the hurricane going to hit, uh, uh, better models of how the universe was created, better treatments for cancer, uh, new, new drugs, uh, new energy reserves capabilities. So uh, high performance computing really does hit the lives of pretty well every person on the planet today uh, and, uh, uh, and in, in, in a way that, that uh, makes a difference today and will make a difference more in the future. We were at NAB and we saw some of the workstations that had all the multi-cores in and maxed out doing all kinds of video rendering. You know, cool stuff that you see kind of on Hollywood, down to, kind of down on a desktop basis. But also there's the other side of the world that you live in, talking about the servers and the data center where, you know, really having that kind of compute power is changing the world. Can you give some more examples of, of things where you guys are changing the world? Sure. So uh, customers, for example, working on uh, bending sheet metal. Uh, might want to find what the optimum way and optimum process is to bend the sheet metal to produce the part they want for the lowest possible cost. They might put together a relatively small high performance computing system because getting lots of simulations of how that works in a relatively short period of time helps them get their product to market at a lower cost. Um, on the other end of things, uh, Stephen Hawking's group, uh, the, the Cosmos group in, uh, at the University of Cambridge uses high performance computing systems, a fairly mu pretty hefty size, but not the biggest systems in the world. Uh, to, uh, to calculate what happened at the beginning of the universe so that our understanding of physics is improved. Uh, so there's a, there's a wide range of, in between that, of, of systems of various sizes to, to work on different problems. Uh, one one uh, academic center is working on uh, a big data research. Uh, he's coming in tomorrow to give a speech with me, uh, uh, Professor uh, Michael Franklin. is coming in to talk about uh, advances in big data and relatively modest sized computing systems sieving the universe for information of relevance to come up with better insights uh, that can be used to how to manage your business or one application he's got actually lowers the power of your cell phone. You, you go in and you log on to this certain site and he can tell you what's going on on your cell phone and from cloud wisdom actually figure out how to reduce your, you know, increase your battery's life. I, that's easy. I can help everyone with that. It's just turn off your Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, but, but <laughs> well, not anymore because it's not complicated now, right? So the, so the question is what applications are consuming your power and how do you manage the settings of those applications in order to make your phone a more effective device for you? Talk about the, um, we were just talking before we were doing the interview about the cancer work and some yeah. of that, because that's really you know, something that people can kind of relate to because sure. it, there's a benefit to, to doing things that people couldn't do before, getting answers faster. Sure, so uh, a group of people produced something called the Cancer Genome Atlas. And uh, uh, what that is is a sets of uh, genomic uh, 
uh, results on patients and their tumors. And uh, this is being studied to try and determine what the mutations are that are present in classes of cancers. And then the idea would be you can produce targeted therapies to address those specific mutations in order to affect the, the mutated cells and not affect the, the normal cancer, the normal non-cancer cells. This is very, this is really personal to me. I mean, I'm, it turns out I'm a cancer patient too. Uh, and uh, and this is this offers the hope for for people like me and for therapies that might target the, their disorders. And where where was this a couple of years ago? Just not available, just from a compute standpoint. Well, so from a compute standpoint, it wasn't available from a the cost of doing a genome factoring. It wasn't realistic. The cost has come down like a factor of a thousand in the span of like five years. Uh, so it's now practical, practical to consider taking a, a significant number of cancers and making the, the data from those cancer studies uh, available for a, a big data class analysis. What about uh, innovations and disruption in, in emerging uh, markets like alternative energy and uh, en existing energy consumption? So uh, part of the challenge in alternative energy is to figure out uh, how much energy is being produced and how much are you, uh, you know, wasting in the process, how to make the alternative energy forms efficient. And so high performance computing can be used to model the physics of what's going on and the devices that are changing, for example, solar or wind or something else into an, ele into an energy footprint, uh, how to make an optimized uh, propeller for a, a wind farm, uh, how to uh, 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 optimize uh, uh, solar, uh, uh, a solar panel kind of design. Um, all that stuff is, is uh, areas where high performance computing systems can make a difference. Uh, that's great stuff and that's also going to change the world. It's great that you guys are doing all that uh, compute and obviously at a low power uh, with, with the energy saving side yeah. of the, the chipset. Um, my next question is, in the reality of business and use cases, where do you see the demand right now for high performance computing? Because you know, the notion of you know, getting more performance out of the hardware has, has always been an Intel Moore's Law thing, but now we're yeah. getting into the era of you know, com companies taking advantage of. So what are some of the use cases you're seeing? Well, so, so one of the things that's really exciting is that as Moore's Law takes the top performance in the biggest systems of the world, it also takes the available performance to enterprises up significantly. So uh, in 1997, the biggest computer in the world was a teraflop, and about a half a gigaflop was available to an enterprise. Uh, today, uh, the biggest computer in the world is 16 petaflops. That's a lot of computation. The biggest system available to most, most companies is about five teraflops. Um, in 2018, when we have an exascale world with another factor of a thousand in performance, uh, we're going to have something almost as big as the biggest computer on the planet in 2009 will be available to every enterprise at a practical price and at a practical power efficiency. So what does that mean? That means these companies can uh, use more data to, to understand their customers better, to make better business decisions, to study how the economies are going to behave and time their products to market better. So from an enterprise perspective, there's top line benefit and there's bottom line benefit. Uh, to having this increased compute capability. Then, then the same technologies can be used in modeling and simulation of what products might be. So uh, designing car parts or, um, or uh, you know, finding new places to drill for oil uh, are all examples of things that people are doing with high performance computing systems on a much smaller physical scale system and much lower powered system than they could do before because of Moore's law driving up the compute density uh, and power efficiency in the marketplace. We've seen a surge of entrepreneurship and also invention among scientists and, and developers around taking some of these new elements, you know, this massive amounts of compute, you know, solid state drives, disk, disk or which is like mem memory, uh, and, and with big data. So my last question I want to ask you is explain to the folks out there um, how big and how disruptive is the, the big data trend and some of these yeah. new things from, from discovery, scientific discovery, to everyday life? Share the magnitude or add so, some color to that. So big data is, gonna, is, is making a significant impact on, uh, on uh, businesses today, but the potential to make more impact is, is even more significant. Um, th I think of big data as uh, combined with the word opportunity. So if you think of big data as a large space where you have massive amounts of data and big data technology goes and gets the information relevant to a decision, then data analytics takes the data that you've gone and sieved for and indexed and found in the massive space of data that's out there and makes a conclusion from it. Then the only thing you have to do is imagine what kind of insights you want to form to get 
uh, a system that can actually acquire the data you need to make a better job with those insights. So it, it literally is the space of creativity that the people have about how to envision or re-envision their businesses, their services, their technologies. Um, that's how much impact big data can have. Um, tremendous impact to the way businesses work, to the way consumers work. Um, and so, again, things like optimizing the power of your cell phone down to improving the flow of traffic in your community uh, are all things that big data can make a difference to. So, um, uh, are, is there a bound to how much impact big data will have? The answer is I don't think so because the volume of data we're producing every year is, is massively scaling, scaling faster than Moore's Law. Um, the ability to use that data is also scaling faster than Moore's Law. So the conclusions we're going to reach from that data are going to be more impactful and more valuable uh, going forward. And I think it's a tremendous economic force as well as a tremendous social force. Okay, John Hedgefeld with uh, the High Performance Computing Group. This is the horsepower that's driving the change in creativity, invention uh, to businesses, to scientific breakthroughs. I'm John Furrier. We're here at the Intel Developer Lounge, software.intel.com, reporting here at IDF 2012.